All right, guys, big news. So I've been playing around with this Radza or Radaxa 03E, and I stumbled across a great repository, some guy named Joshua Reich, right? He's been doing these uh, custom Ubuntu images only for the RK Rock Chip 35 series. So it means the 3566, 3588, 3576, and uh, he has some really good um, images, Ubuntu images, and they work really well. And uh, hardware decoding, um, using the GPU, it all works. So uh, I'm going to show you how it performs. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, show you the setup. So we have our 3E back again, and it's plugged into, um, it's plugged into an SSD hard drive here. Samsung one terabyte, so over USB three, so no bottlenecks there, and um, yeah, let's get into it. My last video, I got a few comments about transcoding, GPU acceleration. I mean, like for example, um, you know, this, so this was running a Jellyfin server on it. Any transcode possible? Um, we have here. Do you have GPU acceleration in Jellyfin? And then we have another person talking about uh, the problem with uh, manufacturers saying it can decode or encode and it doesn't, right? It doesn't do any transcoding. Um, hey, it works. And it's thanks to a guy named Joshua Reich. So um, I'll post the link in the description. Be sure to support him and, uh, you know, uh, check out the links he has there for other RK35 boards. And um, I'm going to show you the performance. I'm going to show you... Um, how it performs with Jellyfin as a server, right? As a server, it's going to be transcoding the files to end devices like my phone, maybe a tablet, right? To my computer for the this video, this part of it, I'm going to show you how it performs when it's uh, streaming to a desktop and streaming to a Fire Tablet 10 Plus uh, HD 10, uh, 2021 version, right? Not a great tablet, honestly, <laughs> but I'll show you how it performs. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, you'll see that it does perform, uh, Jellyfin works, transcodes, uh, it's actually surprising. It's really surprising. It's able to, able to do a like high resolution video, but anyway, uh, we'll get into it right now. All right. So we have the Jellyfin interface up here. So the first one is a 1080p movie, H.264. No surprise there, right? I mean, I mean, it's just a regular H.264 file, so. I just wanted to show you as a baseline, most devices can usually do 1080p H.264, right? Uh, you can see it doesn't really take any resources. So let's jump to something else. Let's jump to an HEVC file. All right, and it's going to load. And uh, before, if you noticed the last video, I had it kind of loaded kind of slowly. And this is generally what happens um, with um, HEVC files, depending on how they're you know contained, the container that it's in. Um, but see, it's just directly streaming it to my browser because it is my PC. Of course, modern browsers, modern computers can play H.265 HEVC natively. So it's not doing any work. So if I change it to, say, 720p, um, it's going to try to transcode this or play this. And it, it doesn't really do anything because it's not really that far off from uh, the 1080p resolution. So, again, it's it's not really that that different what is different um what is different is if we change the resolution to something low like 480p for this particular file just this file so as you can see hardware acceleration is on i don't know if you saw that if you look i'll pause it hardware acceleration it's on and now you can see it's doing it 85 frames per second it's converted to h264 AAC audio. This was, you know, surround sound, six channels. It went down to two. It's H.264 and it's transcoding at 95, 96 frames per second. Not bad. I mean, <laughs> well, it's not. It's it's actually good. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive. It's actually really impressive um, that it does this on the fly. Um, but of course, this is just a simple 1080p HEVC file. Let's up it. Let's watch something that's a little more. <laughs> uh taxing like a 4k hevc file probably what you guys are downloading uh, yourself to you know so i was playing around with this earlier i think i had it to set to like 480p or something like that so it's going to start here in 480p 
As you can see here, uh, FFmpeg is transcoding. It's doing it pretty well. 59 frames per second. That's impressive. You know, it's a 4K video decoded and then re-encoded down to 480p about. And it's doing a really good job. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Uh, this is what I was worried about. I was worried it couldn't handle 4K HEVC files. And yeah, it does. It does. And um, so, so far, it's looking pretty good. So let's start playing around with the resolution a little bit. So I'll show you go from 480p to say like 1080p, right? Um, I noticed that when you go to like 1080p, it's a little more taxing. It's not able to uh, transcode it as quickly, uh, but it still does it. So I'll show you that now. So we can see there, um, it, the transcoding frame rate went down to 29 frames per second, which is okay since most of the movies are like 24 frames per second. But if we look back on it again, it's sped up and now it's at 42. 42 frames per second. Again, H.264, AAC audio, two channels from surround sound, six channels. And it's able to do it, all right? And um, it's, <laughs> I'm impressed, right? I mean, I hope you're impressed too. Um, and then, of course, um, if you have a, a modern computer, put in auto and, you know, most modern computers can decode 4K video very easily. I'm just going to show you that right now, how that looks. Go to playback info and HEVC direct, right? It's uh, playing in the, in the browser directly. No surprises there. Okay, here we have a Fire HD tablet 2021, the plus version. And uh, just to let you know, the processor on this is not that strong. Also, the screen is only 1080p. So there's that as well. So let's get straight into it. There's no point in really showing you H.264 content on this because it's just going to play regardless. So if we go here, uh, we'll look at this file. I'll look at media info. It will let you know here that it is 1080p HEVC. Um, and it is 10-bit. So let's go ahead and play. See what it shows us. And we're going to see how it performs. So there it is. So it's playing. So it's playing right now. And we'll go to playback info. As you can see here, it has been it's transcoding at H.264, doing about 56 frames per second. So good. So a hard test. I know this video is, uh, you know, it's 4K HEVC. It's also 10 bit. So we're going to see how it does here. Let's go ahead and press play. There it is. Let's see what it looks like. So it is now H.264 AAC two channel. Converting it over, it's going about 45 frames frames per second, so it's not insane, <laughs> great great performance, but it's enough to watch the movie. So there you go. So I wanted to show you why this all works, right? Um, beyond, of course, <laughs> what Joshua did there, which great job, but also because even the RK3566, right, um, it is able to do a lot of things, including, you know, like 4K. Um, H.265, H.264 decoding, but also it can do up to 1080p H.264, H.265 in encoding. So it's able to do that for us. So it's not quite in the levels that RK, you know, 3588, right? It's not on the level of 3588, which is a, a beast, right? And I'll show you that right now. So like this, for example, the 3588, uh, really great processor you know it's very high performing i mean look at this look at all these multimedia profiles is able to do i mean it's a beast it's an absolute beast if you know uh if you if you are able to swing it get an rk3588 you know sbc instead i mean as long as you're using one of the more modern uh 
distros like the one from Joshua there with Ubuntu with everything turned on. Uh, I mean, that would be great if we could get, I could test one of those out. But anyway, just pointing this out that even though uh, the RK3566 um, is only able to do, you know, up to 1080p encoding, uh, it's impressive still for, you know, I paid $16 for it and hopefully the prices fall down. Real quick, I just wanted to show you uh, Joshua Reich's uh, Ubuntu Rockchip repository. Very helpful. As you can see here, again, I'll put the link in the description. And if we go down here, you know, it is a community project porting Ubuntu to Rockchip hardware with the goal of providing a stable, fully functional environment. So far, it's been pretty good for me in terms of that using the server version anyway. 3D hardware acceleration. Uh, video player capable of smooth 4K video playback. Um, so far, it's been working pretty well for me on the Rad Z Zero 3E. And uh, there are special specific instructions. You want the latest image? You got to go to the website there, as I highlighted. They have a list of supported boards. Of course, one we're interested in is the Rad Z Zero 3, which is second from the bottom. Go ahead and click on that. When you do, uh, it will show you some images. It should work on the 3E, 3W, doesn't matter. You know, the only difference being one has Wi-Fi, one has Ethernet, right? I did try the desktop image, and it was a little slow making locales and all that, so I switched to the server version, which usually is the version I usually use anyway. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And I uh, just wanted to put some notes here, some little things I want to, tidbits I want to add here. So number one, I was running Ubuntu 2404 server with the 6.1 kernel. Number two, Jellyfin was not in a Docker container. Usually I run in a Docker container, but this time, because everything worked right, it installed natively, and there were no errors involved. Everything worked perfectly. Number three, this particular Radza or Radaxa 03E only had one gigabyte of RAM, if you notice when I showed you earlier on HTOP. So imagine if you had more RAM to do things, but one gigabyte of RAM, well, you saw what it could do. Number four, it never overheated. Sometimes it rose like 60 degrees centigrade, but thankfully just a simple copper heatsink was enough. And number five, Jellyfin did crash on 4K HAVC 60 frames per second video files or like Dolby Vision type files. I mean, it's a bit much for something like this. Um, of course, what do you expect for like something that goes for 16 to $30, right? I mean, really. So if you have any questions or comments, you can drop them down below. And all relevant links to set things up on your board are also below. So I hope you have a great one. Appreciate your time.